Say no to everything that doesn't support your immediate goals. 41% of items that people put on their to-do list are never done at all. Wow. It's like a to-do list is, is the graveyard of, you know, important but not urgent. And when you truly realize what, like just how valuable a single minute is, I mean, money, we can lose it and make it back again. Our health, we can get sick and get healthy again. Time, once it's gone, it is gone. Time is life. The 15 secrets successful people know about time management, the productivity habits of seven billionaires, 13 Olympic athletes, 29 straight A students, and 239 entrepreneurs. You might not use all of them, but if you use one, two, three, or four of them, I'm telling you, you're gonna get a lot more out of your day. Any, anyone can make a big difference. Absolutely. We all have the same amount of time. Every single one of us has the same amount of time, but some of us squander it, some of us waste it, some of us don't make best use of it. It's my goal, my, my hope at the end of this episode that you'll be able to see just how much time you have in the day. And there's something, something in this episode that you'll be able to use to maybe get more out of your day. And that to me is a win. Absolutely a win in my book. Golden nugget number one. Time is your most valuable and scarcest resource. Hey, 1440 is the number that can change your life. And that number is the number of minutes we all have in a single day. And while, you know, most of the people that I interviewed, you know, they're not all doing the same 15 secrets either. The, the common thread was that they always spoke about minutes and the value of time. And when you truly realize what, like just how valuable a single minute is, I mean, money, we can lose it and make it back again. Our health, we can get sick and get healthy again. Time, once it's gone, it is gone. Time is life. And so, you know, in one minute for your health, you know, you can bang out some push-ups or sit-ups or take a, a cleansing breath. For relationships, you can tell someone that you love them or that you're grateful for them. In business, it takes a minute to have a breakthrough idea. And once you truly understand that, all of a sudden, you know, you're not going to let people steal your time with all those God a minute meetings or uh, other trivial things. There's a certain number of minutes every single day that I have at my disposal. And so much of it is just wasted minutes. So if you start to capitalize on the time that you have, you'll realize, holy, I can get a whole bunch done. So golden nugget number two, identify your most important task and do it first. The most important task, the MIT, your MIT is, you know, what is that project that is going to double the size of your business? What is that project that's going to get you the promotion or max out your bonus uh, at work? And then break it down. It's like, what domino can I tip over today that's going to lean on the next one and the next one? And then we have to get in that discipline of scheduling time to work on our MIT first thing in the morning. Behavioral psychologist Dan Ariely talks about we are at our best for about a two hour window of time in the morning. You know, we're at our cognitive best. But what do most of us do? We stroll in with, you know, to work, we open up email, we start working on everybody else's MITs by answering their emails and all that stuff. Before we respond to text, before we listen to voicemails, before we do email, we should work on our MIT. Golden nugget number three, work <laughs> from your calendar, not a to-do list. Stop using a to-do list. You know, I was asking all of these people, self-made billionaires, self-made millionaires, what is your number one secret to productivity? They could have said anything. And none of them mentioned a to-do list. I was about halfway through the interviews and finally I started doing the follow-up. I'm like, well, what about your to-do list? Give me some advice. They laughed at me. They're like, to-do list? You know, we work from a calendar. And as I did the research, it turns out 41% of items that people put on their to-do list are never done at all. Wow. It's like. A to-do list is is the graveyard of, you know, important but not urgent. If you really want to get something done, pick a day, a time, and a duration, and then live from your calendar. Golden nugget number four, to overcome procrastination, beat your future self. So we need to think about, all right, how's that future evil version of ourselves? going to jeopardize our best intentions. And you know, let's say we want to start jogging this week. We want to we want to work out. Well, you know what? I I know that my evil self is going to hit that snooze alarm. How do I how do I fight back? I'm going to I'm going to put my iPhone, I'm going to set that alarm put on the other side of the room. So nice. I got to literally get out of bed to shut it off. 
And that evil Kevin's going to say, oh, man, I don't know where my workout stuff is. I'll, I'll work out tomorrow instead. Well, you know what? I'm going to beat that future version by putting my sneakers right at the end of my bed. In fact, I'm going to go to sleep in my shorts and T-shirt. So I just need to put my sneakers on and I'm dressed. Nice. You know, so we just need to think about all the ways that we're going to procrastinate all those excuses we're going to come up with and try to beat them in the present moment. Golden nugget number five, there will always be more to do. Back when I was young, a young and dumb entrepreneur, you know, I was the guy who was just eight hours a day wasn't enough. So I'd work 16 or 20, five days a week wasn't enough. I'd work seven. The girlfriend or eventually the wife would be like, hey, it's six o'clock, dinner's cold. When are you coming home? Leaving the office in five minutes. Then it's an hour later, I'm still in the office. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things that I learned from interviewing all these people is, they have this sense in their bones, like there will always be more to do. Andy Grove wrote, uh, he was the founder and CEO of Intel. And he said, you know, my day ends when I'm tired and ready to go home, not when I'm done, mm -hmm. because I am never done. Uh, a manager's work is never done. There's always more to be done, more that should be done, always more than can be done. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe we've decided that we're gonna work a 10 hour day or a 12 hour day or a six hour day. Mm -hmm. Whatever you decide, be intentional about it and then realize you've allocated other minutes for your health, which is gym time. You've allocated other minutes for your relationship, including date night or time with your kids. Golden nugget number six, always carry a notebook. Everybody I spoke to talked about carrying a notebook. You know, Richard Branson has written about it over and over again. He says the single most important possession is his little notebook. That's how he built, you know, the Virgin brand. You know, there's all these uh, people that I interviewed that just swear by this power of of jotting down little notes, whether it's journaling or notes from meetings or words of wisdom from the books they read, but it just really changes their life. Yeah, and one of the things that David Allen always says is that our minds are best used for, uh, for processing different ideas, not to hold on to information. You'd be surprised when you start carrying around a notebook with you just how much information comes into your mind that you wanna capture. Now, when you start capturing that information, you realize, holy crap, I've been holding on to so many good like pieces of information and it's just been gone. Like I just lose it or I hold on to it and it just ruins the ability to allow your mind to free itself up to process new information, which is the best state for your mind to be in. Golden nugget number seven, control your inbox. To be honest, many of us use our email inbox and text messages and other social media apps as a form of procrastination, as a form of a little reward. It releases dopamine. It's kind of like pulling that mm. handle on a slot machine. Is it going to be something good? And all of these companies out there and other people in our lives, they want our attention. And that's fine, but it can get in the way of our productivity. So the, the bottom line is shut off the notifications on your phone on everything. It's okay to, to go to email or messages and all of that, but do it when you want to do it, not because someone else is calling you, kind of like Pavlov's dog, mm. you know, ringing a bell and I'm reaching for my phone. I process email like anything else three times a day, morning, noon, and night. Now, again, the number's not so important, Ryan. I mean, you know, I know people who only process it once a week or once a day, and others, people will tell me, hey, I'm a stockbroker or whatever, I need to get back to people all the time. Fine, process it every 30 minutes or 15 minutes. The idea is to be intentional about it. Shut off the notifications. So if you're out there and you haven't shut off your email notifications, what are you waiting for? I've done that a long time ago. I shut it off because it's just distraction. Golden nugget number eight, schedule and attend meetings as a last resort. Now we can't all, you know, be like Mark Cuban and just say no to our boss and other people with meetings. Right. We can say no much more often. We can say no to a lot of meetings. We could say no to meetings before noon. Like let's keep our deep work in the morning, mm. then our collaborative work in the afternoon. And if you have to say yes to a meeting, say no to long meetings. Richard Branson again says, there's few meetings that need to last more than five or 10 minutes. And so that's just the idea is let's say no as often as possible, at least one day a week say no, and then try to say no to long meetings. Mm, absolutely, and that actually, you know what, that breaks us into the next golden nugget, golden nugget number <laughs> nine. Say no to everything that doesn't support your immediate goals. They're, they're not being rude, but the most highly successful people 
they know what their values are, their goals are, and they fill their calendar with things that'll get there. And that doesn't leave time for a lot of other, other things. You know, we're raised from being really young to like, hey, you know, you, you want to be liked, so you want to help people. You're told it's nice to help people. You don't want to be rude. W what's helpful to me is when I realized that every, every time I say yes to something, I'm actually saying no to another thing or many things. I got myself into so much trouble, man, because I like to be liked. And so I would say yes to people all the time, even though I knew by saying yes, it would screw up my schedule. I'd have to push other things back. In the back of my head, I was like, you're not going to do this anymore. You're not going to go to the gym. Your whole schedule's thrown off, off course. Getting good at saying no and doing it in a very polite way, in a delicate way, is something that a lot of you out there have to do. Golden nugget number 10, follow the powerful Pareto principle. Yeah, the Pareto principle is more commonly known as the 80-20 rule. And it's this idea that most of the results in almost any activity, 80% of the results, comes from about 20% of the activity. So it's just really pausing, slowing down, and looking at with all the work that you're doing to build your business, to get your work done, you know, what are the handful of tasks that are getting you most of your results? Just focus on those things. Gold nugget number 11, focus on your unique strengths and passion. We really need to remember the power of delegation. You know, I'm a perfectionist, so nobody can do anything as good as I can. You know, I've got to do everything to do it right. And the reality, Ryan, is that might be true, but we have to realize, again, think about that 80-20 rule. This feeds into this, that yes, if I delegate it to uh, someone on my team, maybe it's not going to be perfect, but if it's 80% to perfect, I need to be okay with that and let it go because now that just freed up all of my time. Golden nugget number 12. Batch your work with recurring themes. So this one, you know, you read in the book, Innovative Entrepreneurs, they really assign different themes to their office days so that employees can really concentrate on one specific type of work. Well-known sort of consultant to consultants, Dan Sullivan, uh, you know, he talks about entrepreneurs should have focus days, buffer days, and free days. Mm -hmm. And the focus days, you know, those are your game days. Those are, those are the days where you are doing your most important activities. Usually it's sales or revenue related, but whatever your strengths are. A buffer day, that's the day to catch up on phone calls and emails and sign paperwork and, you know, all the other administrative stuff we have to do. And then free days are the days where you do not work. And what you're doing is you're resting and recharging, which all the Olympic athletes really talk to me about that. Golden nugget number 13. If you can do a task in less than five minutes, do it immediately. So this really comes down to the touch it once principle. I'm, I go to an extreme on this one. I walk to, to get the mail out of the mailbox every day. Well, most people, you, you come inside and there's the two piles. There's the junk pile and then the bills. And then later we go through the junk again. And then we go through the bills again. On my walk back up to the garage, I am sorting that junk and I'm dropping it right in the recycle bin mm -hmm. before I even get into my house. <laughs> Those bills, they go into the bill pile, which again, I process on Friday afternoons. I don't even open the envelopes until I'm ready to do them. You know, I don't I don't care about what my electric bill or cable bill is. I'm just going to leave it sit there until I'm ready to to process it. So, you know, email, you open an email when you're ready to process it in that moment. Uh, just learn to touch everything once. Golden nugget number 14, routinely use early mornings to strengthen your mind, your body and your spirit because you know I'm asking people give me your number one productivity tip. So I'm expecting to hear about <laughs> task lists and right. calendars and priorities. So many people said my number one productivity tip is what I do in the first hour of my day. And they're not talking about getting work done. They're talking about their mind and body. Most of the people that I interviewed, these high performers, they weren't waking up feeling stressed, rushing to the office and diving into emails. Mm -hmm. They, at first hour, that first 30 minutes, they were investing in themselves for the long game. Last but certainly not least, golden nugget number 15. Productivity is about energy and focus, not time. You know, we all have the same 1,440 minutes a day. We can't get more of that. It's not about managing the time. 
So the idea is, first of all, take care of our bodies, light cardio, lots of water, get good deep sleep. In addition to that, the most productive people, they actually take more breaks. So we're designed to kind of like sprint and rest, sprint and rest. Mm -hmm. And so again, to each of their own, you know, a lot of people like this Pomodoro technique, you know, you just sprint for 25 minutes, then pop up and walk around, get some air, get some water. The idea is to spend more time on single tasking, all out focused attention, you know, these working jam sessions, then a little break and then get back to it. Go to cutthecrappodcast.com. Also, don't forget to connect with me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. You see what I'm doing and uh, see what I'm up to throughout the week.